What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna be installing WordPress multi-site in your local development environment. And in particular, I'm gonna be doing this using XAMPP on Windows and MAMP in macOS. Now, what is WordPress multi-site? It's an advanced installation of WordPress that gives you the ability to manage multiple subsites. You can create a network of websites with WordPress multi-site. And it's actually what's used by Automatic with WordPress.com. And a lot of managed hosting providers use WordPress multi-site as well. And they use something called domain mapping in order to give a unique domain to each subsite. So that way it doesn't look like it's on a network of sites. Now the benefit here is especially if you're a freelancer, every time you create a new website for a client, you can then offer managed hosting for them. You can charge them anywhere from $20 or $30 per month or more if there's going to be some custom services provided. And then over time, let's say you get a couple of hundred people hosting their websites on your installation. That's pretty decent recurring income. And the beauty is you can manage all of your sites from one dashboard. Now I do have other videos on my YouTube channel dedicated to WordPress multi-site, but they're a little bit older and I want to give you a fresh take on how to use it, how to work with it, and how to set it up locally. And I think that's important because you should definitely play around with the tools you're gonna be using in a development environment and get familiar with it before you go to your production site. All right, so for this video, there are gonna be timestamps down below. So the first segment is gonna be on Windows using XAMPP. And then I'll have a timestamp for MAMP on macOS. And I'll be using my WWP WordPress development training theme, where I teach people how to code a custom theme using some of the best resources. So if you wanna learn more about that, go to my channel and check out the video, WordPress theme development tutorial with WWP. And you can get more information from my website. All right, so first things first, Let's go to the dashboard. I wanna hover over where it says tools, and these are the options that you currently have. Now, if you go to the database, these are the default database tables that comes with a standard installation of WordPress. All right, so now what we have to do is add some code to our WP config file in our local installation. So I'll go to my code editor, and right here, right above the line that says that's all, I'm gonna paste in this snippet right here. It's a constant that enables you to set up WordPress multi-site. Let's go back to the browser, go back to the dashboard. And remember, tools, this is what you currently have. But once you refresh and go to tools, and now you have this network setup link right here. Make this screen a little bit bigger. Let's click on that. And if you have plugins that are activated, you have to deactivate your plugins. Go back to tools, network setup. You can start the process of installing WordPress multi-site. Click install. I'm going to copy this snippet right here. Go back to your editor. Right underneath that previous line, paste that in and save it. Back to the browser. And for your HC access file, copy that. And go to your HC access file that's in the root of your local WordPress installation. And right here, we're going to replace this code here. Everything in between the opening and closing if module. And then save it. Let's go back to the browser. Now remember, in your database, you have 12 tables. Let's reload this page. It's going to log you out. Log back in. And now you see that you have this new link up here, My Sites. You go to Network Admin to the dashboard. And now you can handle your updates centrally from one dashboard. Let's go to the Settings page right here. So these are your network settings. You have your network title, the admin email, your registration settings. These are the band names. And the reason why you would have this is so you won't have any conflicts in the URL structure. You have the welcome email, welcome user email, first post, first page, comment, author, email, URL, your upload settings, the file types, the max upload file size. These are the settings that you have. Now your plugins are over here. You can network activate a plugin and your themes are right here you can network enable your themes. Now notice here, you can add a new theme when you're in the network admin section. And in plugins, you can add a new plugin. But now if you go to a subsite, you can't add a new theme. And you see that since we haven't enabled the other themes to be network enabled, they're not here. And with plugins, we can't add a new plugin here either. You can only add plugins and themes via the network admin dashboard. All right, so let's go back to the database over here with PHP MyAdmin. And remember we have 12 tables, but if we reload, 
Now you see we have 18 tables. Six new tables were added and they include the blog meta, blogs, registration, log, signups, site, site meta, and then you have your other 12 tables that you previously had. So if we go here, if we go to sites, we could add a new site or we could view all sites. Currently we only have one. So let's add another. Add site. And now you could visit the dashboard or edit the site. And you see over here, we have it right here as well. If we go to the database with phpMyAdmin, remember we had 18. If we reload now, we now have 10 more tables or 28 tables in total. And one thing you'll notice is you could identify which tables are associated with the other site because it has a new number. Instead of just a regular prefix with the table name, it has the prefix with the number of the site ID and the table name itself. So if we add another site, Add site. Now you see the new site there. If you go back to the phpMyAdmin database here and reload. Now you have 10 more tables and now we have the prefix with the number three. If you go down here to blogs, you could see in the database we have our main one here. Then we have the blog ID two is for new WP and the blog ID three is for regular WP. And you can go back to the dashboard for the new site as well. All right, so now if you visit the front of the site itself, you see it's gonna be using one of the default themes. But what if you wanna change what theme is the default used on all brand new subsites? Let's go back to our code editor over here. I'm gonna paste in this constant over here. This will be the theme name for the default theme used on new sites. So once you save that, let's go back to the browser. Let's go to the network admin and sites. Let's add a new site, add site. And now if we visit that site, you can see that it's using WWP instead of one of the other default themes. And again, if we go back here to phpMyAdmin and reload, now you see the blog ID is four and now we have 48 tables. All right, so now we're gonna be setting up WordPress multi-site on macOS using MAMP. One thing I want you to take note of is the URL structure. You see we're using the port number 8888. Now that's gonna cause a problem, but I wanna show you what it does first. So I'm using DevWP, which is my WordPress development training theme, where I teach people how to code their very own WordPress theme using some of the best resources. If that interests you, then check out that video and you can learn more on my website. All right, but if we go over here and we go to the dashboard, first thing I want to show you is the tools section. Let me make the screen a little bit bigger and you see what options we have here. What I'm going to do is take this snippet of code, go to the text editor and right above this line over here, I'll paste it in and then I'll save it. Go back to the browser, reload the page. Now we go to tools and now you have the network setup link right there. Click on that. It says first you should deactivate your plugins. So I'll deactivate. Go back to tools, network setup, and we get this error over here. And again, that's because of the URL structure. And by default, WordPress multi-site will not be able to be installed with this structure of the URL. So to resolve that, let me go back over here, click on preferences, and where it says set web and MySQL ports, click this button right there, and then click okay. It should have restarted your servers. Now, if you reload, you're gonna get this issue over here. Cause again, now we're using different port numbers. So let's X out of that, X out of this one, click on web start again. And now you see the port number is different. Go to my website and we still have that issue. And the reason for that is because this is an installation that existed previously. So it's almost like migrating your website from one domain name to another domain name. There's references to the old URL inside the database. So we have to resolve that. So the way to do that, we'll go to map in the browser, click on tools, click on PHP my admin, go to the database you wanna focus on. And now what I'll do, I have these snippets over here, these commands, I'll copy these. In PHP my admin, I'll click on SQL and I'll paste this in. Let me make it larger. All right, so basically what we're doing is we're updating these four tables within the database, replacing the old URL that has the port number with the brand new URL that doesn't have the port number. And for this one over here, for development environments is recommended you do this, but it's not recommended on production environment in terms of the GUID, the global unique identifier. And it has to do with feed readers and things of that nature, but it's okay for here. And then we 
we have the update the post and then update the post meta. We could simulate the query and it tells you what it's gonna do. Click on go and now that's resolved. Let's see over here. X out of that one, go back here. And now you see that we have it working again. But this time we have the brand new URL. So I'm gonna log in. I'll go to tools, network setup, and you'll be presented with this screen right here. Click on install. And then what you wanna do is copy this code right here into your WP config file. Put it right under what we previously had, the previous code snippet that we pasted there. Then grab this right here, go to your HC access file, then save that. Notice I put it in between the if module mod rewrite condition check here, and then reload your page, log back in, and now you have this new link over here, my sites. You have the network admin, you have your website over here. If we go to the network admin area, you can go to the dashboard, and again, the benefit of WordPress multi-site is you could run a network of websites and you can manage it from one location. If you go to settings, these are your settings. Take some time to review this. Basically, this is the network title. This is the network email, how you want to handle registrations. Your welcome email, your welcome user email, your first post, first page, comment, author email URL your upload settings, your upload file types, your max upload file size. Let's go to DevWP here, go to the dashboard. Let's see what's in the plugin section. And we see that I have them all here on my main site. And actually real quick, what I wanna do is take you back to the database. Notice how initially we had 12 tables. If you reload now, you're gonna see we have 18 tables now. We have six brand new tables. We have the registration log, signups, site, site meta, blog meta, and blogs. But that's because we only have a single site installed. Go back here to sites in the network admin area. Let's add a brand new site. So now we added a brand new site. You can see it right here. And now if we go back, remember we had 18 tables but now we have 28 tables. It created 10 additional tables. Now those tables are right here and they can be identified because they'll have the number associated for that site. So these are the new tables that are created. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is if you go back to any of the other subsites, even your main site, and you go to plugins, you can't add a new plugin from over here. You have to do it from your network admin area. And the same thing goes for themes. You can't add a brand new theme here either. You would have to go over here in your network admin and you could add a new theme there. Now I definitely think you should spend some time learning how to work with WordPress multi-site. It's an advanced installation of WordPress and it opens up some new opportunities for you in terms of either just simplifying your process of managing multiple websites under one dashboard. Let's say you have a couple of websites all on different topics. You can set up your WordPress multi-site installation and manage all of your sites from one location. And if you have clients or if you want to create new revenue streams, you could offer a hosting service and manage all of your clients' websites in your installation. And now you have some recurring revenue coming in every single month. And again, some big companies use WordPress multi-site. You have Automatic with WordPress.com. And then you obviously have some managed hosting providers. They use multi-site as well. But it's important that you get familiar with how it operates. And that's why I wanted to create a video and how to set it up in your local development environment with XAMPP on Windows and MAMP on Mac OS. Now, in a previous video, I spoke about WordPress user roles. And you can find the article that goes with that over here. And basically, there are five roles in the standard installation of WordPress. But when you have a multi-site setup, you have the super admin role. So definitely check out that video or the article if you want to learn more about that. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification icon. If you have any thoughts, ideas, or suggestions, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching and happy coding.